Well, hello, hello there, ladies and gents. Welcome to Face TV. This is the grand finals of the G2A.com European Cup. We've got Hellraisers and we have LDLC. Hellraisers, though, they're missing somebody. They're missing Kucha. Flamey stepped up to the plate to replace Kucha. Um, so we'll have to see how that goes. How are you doing? How are you doing, James? You know what else is missing? What is that? Grenade. The grenade. Where is the grenade? It's over there. Next to the Fifi jar. Oh. I'll have to pull that. I haven't seen the Fifi jar out. for a while, actually. That's because it's not no longer necessary. It's That's because we're pronouncing served, things properly, guys. It's served its purpose and it's now redundant. Like so many things. Well, I'm sure I'm sure a time will come. I'll be redundant probably soon. I don't even know where to go with that, but because I was complimenting you, because you're, you're going to be so good, you're going to be able to carry the cast by yourself, and uh, it's a, it's, this is a, I feel like we're in a relationship here, Dan. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I know that makes you feel uncomfortable. Considering what we were doing earlier, it's a, it's a. <laughs> what? Don't say that. Well, there yeah, you, you have go. to explain what, what were we doing earlier. Well, that's that's the thing, James. Oh, I know what we were doing earlier. Exactly. Yeah, we were going we for were Jamaican a, food. Yeah, we were, but but it was full, so we had a, mm. a bit of a walk. Yeah, basically, James was like, oh, let's go get Jamaican food before the before the show and everything. And I was like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And then we ended up just walking around for a while, and we didn't eat anything. It was great. I had a nice chat, though. We had a good chat. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's uh, let's check out the brackets then, as we can see the progression of the tournament. And uh, oh, I, was, I was thinking either I, I can try to like make the, make a segue, or I, can, or I can just go for it. I think it's I think the cold I cut. Think, I think the beginning, like of our chat today, of the stream. Yeah. It's just gone straight into a ditch. <laughs> it's gone straight into a ditch, <laughs> and it's on fire. And but it's that's, weird. that's 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 what people want to see. Anyway, grand final time. We yes. had we had an amazing match between that and Hellraisers this week. We, I was I was so hyped for that match. I was really looking forward to it. It was it was the most it was the most um, back and forth, but at the same time, one team destroying each other. Like they're taking turns to destroy each other. Like we had, we had what was it? That lost every single knife round because even though he was called Blade, he ha he can't teach him how to win a knife round. So I don't know what's going on there, but Blade. Because the Blade is. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> I can't <laughs> think of the words. Should I say dull? Yes. What's the blunt? What's blunt? the shot? Blunt? blunt? Yes. Dull. I guess the blade is blunt, guys. <laughs> All right. So there are the odds. You got some odds going on. Hellraiser's getting pretty wrecked on the odds. That makes sense. That makes sense. LDLC, they won Dreamhack Winter 2014. Hellraiser's, to be honest, they got Kucha, they got uh, Flamies to the Kucha. So that's actually not too bad, but it's not their lineup. So maybe this played played a this part. Is, the thing is, like, if I, if I, this because this is like a face it cast, yep. I'm not going to bet on the match. Doesn't really matter, but I'm still not going to do it. Yes. Just you know, ethical reasons, I suppose. But at least that's what he says. If, if uh, I do have five accounts on CSGO, and we also know you're a massive troll and you lie, um, and you give people s <laughs> like bisons. So um, <laughs> anyway, so like hell raises are eleven <laughs> eleven percent. Okay, now for me, if I was going to bet on this match, yeah. I would absolutely bet on hell raises because the thing is. If we can bring the odds up again, please, just for a second, because I want to just point something out in terms of how things work when you're betting, right? Okay, so let's say you've bet on, he on LDLC here, on CSGO Lounge. Okay, 89% of people cannot all share 11% of skins. So at this point, there's actually no point. Unless you're putting on like four Asimovs, there's no point betting on LDLC. You may as well do a value bet on Hellraisers. But again, if if you're like if you haven't got many skins to bet and you're just trying to build things up, then you should just avoid the match altogether or go all in on LDLC. But I mean, all you can do this should clearly be the odds are not worth it. But if you have spare skins lying around and you don't really care, then absolutely stick stick them in Hellraiser. This should be a new show where we get James on for thirty minutes. He can talk about the economy, uh, the current economy, and we can talk about skins. We can talk about like the the fixtures that are coming up and how you should place place your bets. That that should be a thing. I used to bet a lot. On CSGO Lounge. But now I um, I have a problem with cases. Mm. I spent over £100 on Chroma cases. And uh, I didn't mm. get a Chroma knife. Nice. Which is what I wanted. You know what I just realised, by the way? If there's ever a situation where you end up in court or something and, and a character witness has to be called, it's not. it shouldn't be me. Because the first thing I'm going to say under oath is that this man gives people... <laughs> <laughs> Battle scarred. Uh, so we have a giveaway Sandash. today. <laughs> <laughs> in that. fact, in fact, guys, let me show you. So, so just just before we go to switch to the game, actually, we'll, we'll just explain that. Obviously, 
um, that versus Hellraisers, it broke a number of records in CSGO Lounge. First one was, more, it was the first time more than 150,000 people have bet on one match, which you've done again today, actually. We've got 161,000 today. Good job, but, guys. Um, last week we had 163,000. We had over half a million skins on one match as well. So things are going bananas. CSGO Lounge went bananas. went, dudes, guys, we've got to give some skins away. All right, let's go to the game. Whoa. Let's show you what you can win today. Right. Let's go backwards. Whoa. The first one is you could win an M4A4 bullet rain. Look at that. Look at these weird eyeballs. If you're into eyeballs, then definitely uh, you might be in with a chance of winning this skin. You could, we've got the Asimov as well. We've got that Asimov. See what I did there? Oh, yeah. Could win that one as well. <laughs> we've got two AK, AK case hardens. I'll just show you one of them because they are the same gun. You've got lots of blue if you like blue stuff. And uh, this may be for you. We also have an M4A1S Cyrex. If you're more of a silent killer, you could be in with a chance of winning this lovely weapon here. We've got a stat track, or boom. One of the, uh, the classics, the originals. If you like Marvel Comics, maybe this one is indeed for you. Going forward, we have the AWP Lightning Strike here, which is also very nice. We've seen some videos sometimes actually, oops, actually fire li um, lightning. I, yeah, I saw that. That was really, I've only seen this game. That and again, if, if you come up short <laughs> in the coin flip, <laughs> Eagle Mako's knife. then you could win Igor Mako's knife. Hey, your TV you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, can you can you give some backstory here because I don't even know the backstory. No, this is this is an inside joke for the HR TV boys and girls. So uh, all right, all right. Shout outs to you guys. Anyway, what about that Glock fade that I saw there? Is that, or is that just yours? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> all right. No, that is mine. That is the rest of that is is uh, your inventory. What I spend all my money on. God damn it, James. Far too much. You have a problem. We need to have an intervention. I was going. I offered. We should do it live on stream. Pardon? We should do an intervention live on stream. I guess I shouldn't tell you about it, though. That kind of defeats the point of an intervention. Yes, so now I'll just lock all my doors. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair so, enough. best of five, Hellraisers okay. versus LDLC. Right. No, I have to say, I'm pulling for Hellraisers. So like, LDLC are one of my favorite teams, but mm. I feel like it's about time. Because I, I feel like if, if Hellraisers beat LDLC, would you yep. call that like a big upset? Yeah, yeah. it'd be a massive upset, especially considering that they have a sub. Yeah, well, but generally speaking, it's a huge upset. Hellraisers are the worst team. They just are worse, in my opinion. In my wow, opinion, they are the worst team. They are. I mean, LDLC are a great team. The they're worst team. I thought you said no, no, the no, worst they, 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 team. They, I was no, like, no. Crap. that's a bit. No, that's a bit harsh. I wouldn't say that, please. Okay. I'm not that kind of guy. I wouldn't say. That. I wouldn't say they're the worst team. But they're worse than LDLC. That's fair to say, at least. Could say that is why the odds are in, as they yeah, are. But I, I, I feel like um, at some points, I feel like Hellraiser is going to have to go through that glass ceiling. It's the thing is as well as that. If it was best of one or best of three, I could be like, okay, maybe, maybe they can do it. Personally, because I mean, this is this is the concept. Obviously, if the better team will have more of a chance to show their superiority, superiority or the difference in skill, the longer the match goes on. That's that's the thing. So you've got yeah, a best of five. Set. Exactly. So they get more chances to show um, that they're better, more time to show they're better. So so it does play to LDLC being on paper the much better team uh, in this instance. And also, obviously, you've got, you got to make sure that we, we don't forget that Kucha is being subbed out right now. So that, that's always going to hurt a little bit. But um, how is this? Uh, to be fair, they can, they can take maps, absolutely. Um, where do you think where do where do you think the danger zone is here for LDLC exactly? Because we Simple. got s no no I mean map wise. Okay, let's map go. Wise. What, so are, what are the maps? So we got we got um, so first of all, I just do we know do you do we know what the vetoes? Yeah, are? I was just gonna say like first of all the vetoes. So season was removed by Hellraisers, which seems fairly standard. LDLC took out Mirage, which is quite smart as well. They don't I don't. I don't see them play a lot of Mirage these days. They LDLC? Yeah, but they used to be quite good there. It might just be because I think it's more that they just want to remove it from Hellraisers because Hellraisers have a pretty dangerous uh, uh, Mirage sometimes. We saw what Simple did to yeah. that. Yeah. So mm. my, my question is, if you're Hellraisers, like I, I thought you would either veto Cash. Well, I don't know. I mean, no, I don't think, as because it's Simple, I don't think you do veto Cash, actually, so ignore that. I think you probably veto Overpass. If you're Hellraisers. They, yeah, I mean, but they, they feel strong on Overpass as well. Again, we saw the previous Hellraisers blog. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they did have one about this match as well, but I didn't write it. I didn't read it in time um, because I was, uh, well, I couldn't read it in time. So why do you think Hellraisers veto season? Is it because they don't play season? I think or it's because just they want to stop LDLC from playing season. I I, know, I think it's just because it's just terrible for them. Like, it's I think, I think it's just a terrible map for them. And LDLC are quite decent on season, so... 
I don't know. It's just I just I think it's I think Hellraisers are one of those teams where like there are a lot of top teams that don't really have a problem map and they tend to remove based on how they feel the like their interaction with the other team will go. I feel like this is not that. I feel like Hellraisers are underprepared on season. That's my take on it. Whereas LDLC, they're removing what they think is good for Hellraisers, Mirage. So mm. I think that makes sense. And we are going to Nuke first of all. That was the pick of Hellraisers. So Hellraisers choose Nuke to kick things off, um, which which is pretty smart. I think like again. Hellraisers being the team that are uh, on paper worse than LDLC, they, sh they, they on paper should lose this final against LDLC. No one's going to disagree with that. Um, this is a great way to kick things off because if they get the early map advantage by just getting the knife, they seem to win every knife round against that. So they must have an idea how to do the knives. So they win the knife and they get a great CT half, follow it up with a solid just opening with a T, T pistol or something and just close out the first map. Boom. Then it goes to dust two. And... You never know, like with even like a team like Hellraisers. I mean, that's a great map for them as well. It is LDLC's choice, but I could definitely see potentially LDLC, L LDLC actually going down two maps before getting to cash, um, potentially. So I feel like the first two maps should, in theory, be the most sketchy here for LDLC. How do you how do you feel about it? Well, actually, regarding um, knife rounds, we had uh, because again that lost five knife rounds in the best. It that's lost five knife rounds in the best of three, in the best of five, sorry. Um, and I'm wondering, I'm, I think after this tournament, I'm going to ask the players how they feel about kind of knife rounds in the best of five, because the other option is yeah, yeah. like map, one team picks the first map, second team picks which side they want to start on. And the, you could do that for the first four maps and then do knife for the fifth. And that might be, I mean, how do you feel about that? I, I generally like it being predetermined because it's, it can be more fair because like with with the DAT matchup, I felt like that was just. I, I don't feel like it spoiled the the game or something, but I did feel like it had kind of too much of a negative impact on DAT, basically because it, it sucks to just constantly lose knife rounds, constantly like not get the good feeling of just starting on a, on the side that you want because it does. I mean, and then you feel like your luck is constantly down all the time. It's just I don't know. It's just not a great. I don't think it's as fair as it can be. But like in our in the face it season, we obviously have it predetermined where you have the home and away system. Yeah. And that's I think that's great. That's I really love that. I can't wait till we do the next face it season. I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to that as well. But uh, but yeah, predetermined for me is is good. Maybe a coin flip. What do you coin flip? No. Yeah, I love uh, coin flips, man. Yeah, yeah, because it always comes up. You, you always just manipulate the result, right? I don't, you know, just, hey, the, the, the coin so lands on the table. you give away a bison sand the coin, the coin lands on the table. All right, well. That's what I have to say. Truth will be, will be I'm sure Richard Lewis is going to gonna like find the truth about James's like mad cons and schemes. No, he's, he, he's, he's, um, he's not going to be allowed in while coin flips are happening. All right, fair He'll enough. have to be outside with like a bag on his head or something. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that sounds fair. Well, I think we're actually starting to starting this match now. We've got, we got uh, LDLC and Hellraisers jumping in to Nuke. We do have uh, Hellraisers starting off on the T side, though. So, unfortunately for them, they're not going to get that early edge that, as I kind of, you know, uh, was talking about, it, it could have been like a potentially really good start, but you never know. You never know. So, so let's uh, get into the action here. So LDLC picked this map as, as the first map. Do you think it's to try and minimize... Simple's kind of uh, effectiveness because I think there's only so much he can do on this well, map this without rotating to other places up compared to say this is uh, Hellraiser's pick. So oh, this is Hellraiser's yeah, pick. yeah, yeah. This oh, is Hellraiser's uh, pick, and uh, I'm I'm going to assume again that it's just because they wanted wanted to get that C early CT start to get just get a really good uh, good first map going. Be because that's kind of the dynamic here, right? But but so uh, we'll hold that for for now. We have Dozier trying to push into ramp. He's actually broken through. And LDLC are just chilling right now. We're already seeing a lot of health uh, away from Angel here. And as LDLC are trying to work out what's going on, Shocks coming up from Secret to see what's happening. You can see players all over the place. Look at the action there from Shocks. That's great pistol work. MBK coming in from the back whilst they're distracted. They are being picked off so easily now by the French side. And uh, looks like it's all under control. Angel left with the one health. Good luck, Angel. This is, this is going to be, uh, be a swift death for him. And we are going to have ourselves a pistol round one by LDLC. So they get to start and uh, just, just feel comfortable. That's great for them. I feel like pistol rounds against LDLC should be like, let's find out where Shoxy is and go <laughs> yeah. anywhere else. Cause well, I love what they did. They, they managed to, to take over Hell. But this, that was basically just a pistol round, right? Just sometimes with players of this caliber, everyone dies. Everyone just gets one tapped in the face. Sometimes that happens. See, Shock's just rolling with the 
No. He don't need no rifle. But gonna have a T push outside. Let's see if they can get into uh, secret safely. Shoxy getting the first frag. Simple getting the trade. But uh, what cost? He has 37 HP left. And Dozier with 54 has been tagged. So things are going to slow down as the T's approach hell. But the bomb is going to be down, which is going to uh, limit their options by a long way. Smith's just cleaning up shop. A bit of assistance from Happy. You can see Dozier in a get right position, but he just gets seen by Kiyoshima. Again, that, that one is uh, you, in that position, you don't get seen in uh, the peripheral vision of players most of the times, but Kishima, he knows he knows that position and specifically checked it. Very well done. Yeah, if I he didn't, he could have got knifed there, or who knows what. I think it was Cologne where Get Right used Ooh, that Ooh, we've got a Doppler. Sorry to interrupt you, but uh, one of the <laughs> new skins in the house. It looks like someone threw Ribena on it, though, so... Anyway. <laughs> well, we're going to see uh, how is this in with their first bite. Shock's trying to get his angle through the smoke. They're not quite happening just yet. I like this outside presence we're here. We do have Happy, who's on the uh, T-Reds container outside, just uh, just chilling. And gonna s actually, a flash going to go past. Happy's in a really good position here. This can be very dangerous with that Famous. And they're going to spot him quickly. Happy unable to make the frag, but the support with Shocks will make the trade happen. And so 4-on-4 four four now is still they are looking for that info. MBK going to find himself a frag as well. So Hellraisers with Flamey and Angel and Markloff, and two of those players being so horribly low on health. This is looking a bit disastrous. It's, uh, it's going to be hard to find opportunities from this position. You really need to try to just make something crazy happen. Just connect on some heads. I mean, how do you deal with this, James? It's just, <laughs> it's just, it's so, it just feels hopeless. Yeah, you need picks and you need lots of picks. Kishima not doing any damage there, but Smith is in a great position to punish Markov and punish he will. Trade frag coming in thick wow. and fast. Oh, that was a flying headshot, and NBK came up to say hello and just got slammed back down again. All of a sudden, Shoxi is the only man standing for LDLC. What just happened? Oh, happens? he goes to the peak and Flamey cuts his head off. That was madness. They entered so quickly and the team play was phenomenal. Before LDLC could actually realize what was happening, put, like I think one guy got spotted. He gets sprayed down. They're looking all over the place. The perfect storm of an attack there from Hellraiser to save that. It looked, as I said, pretty hopeless. I mean, what? <laughs> there was like collectively 120 health on three players, so... Very well done by Hellraisers. How do you have to watch out? Because if they start losing rounds early on like this, that's going to put a lot of pressure on the uh, on how they on their expectation of their performance on the first half. We've got Shoxy going towards the secret area. Let's see what damage he can do. Again, they they absolutely must win this round. We still see them with a buy. Oh, oh, denied down the stairs. Flamey. Oh, he got sent first class into hell right there. Kiss of death from that AK. Got a rotation from Smith now. He's going to be going towards the secret area to try and uh, strengthen LDLC's defense outside. But Hellraiser's just kind of creeping all over the place, almost like the, the Zerg army at the moment. Yeah, so they have outside. They can go down, and this is something the LDLC have. They, they understand. They understand exactly where their openings are at the moment. So all they have to do is just uh, maintain positions. And got MBK in Toxic there. It's all simple with the pick on the happy. So things starting to get a little bit troublesome here for LDLC. 30 seconds left on the clock. And we can see Kyoshima repositioning here towards the vent. They still don't know 100% where the commitment is. Okay, now they know. Going to be dropping down the vent. In goes Flamey into the plant in the smoke. Kyoshima to take down Angel, but things are getting a little bit hectic here. It's all on happy. Over by Toxic. He's going to get taken out and... Uh, there it is. They're two to two. They're going to force out the eco already. This is actually looking amazing. Hellraisers. It's, cr it's crazy. Do we see LDLC play nuke very often? Not a huge amount. Not a hu but the, the old the old LDLC lineup uh, in the past with uh, with Happy, um, of course, leading. Um, he he actually made them into a very good nuke team. But you're right. It's not a map we saw, we see a lot from LDLC. But they're very capable here. They have. They have great strats and tactics. They know what they're doing. I feel it's like it's not a weakness at all. I would say. I feel like Nuke has generally fallen out of favor in terms of picks from from a lot of teams in Counter Strike. And I think you're more likely, obviously, to see it in a best of five where you're you're, you're playing five out of yeah. seven maps. Well, the thing about this so far is that this is one of the reasons why Hellraiser's 
are dangerous is because, okay, maybe they're not the favorite team. Okay, maybe they have problems with strategy, all this kind of stuff. But these guys can frag like crazy. They've got some like good team play uh, when it comes to these, these uh, fast-paced situations. They've got some good, like very good game sense and tactical awareness of how to play uh, situations and uh, how, how, to, how to basically use their intuition. Because they, they, they have great game sense. These are great players. And this is like what, kind of what we're seeing. We're seeing these situations which look kind of impossible from a strategic sense, positionally, but they just walk out there and hit the shots. You can't argue with that. Mm. So it's, it's, it this, now this gets interesting. Like this is actually a really cool way to start this best of five because I was worried that we might just have like 3-0 from LDLC. I was, just, I was just worried about that because looking at the maps, like Newt goes badly for them. You know, Dust 2, Cash, Cash, I really don't see how Razor's doing amazingly on Cash. They, 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 ha they, are, they can be quite but good simple. on Cash and simple, but the LDLC the thing is, is so good there. Yeah, but I think, I, f I feel like... Um, L I think Cash is, is arguably LDLC's flashiest map. It is, and, yeah. And w by by the way they take A with all their, their grenades and, and flashbangs, uh, I think it's it's flat it's very flashy. So it's very very memorable for that reason. And I think uh, you know How is it's simple. How is I think it's simple. Sometimes they play super amazingly on Cash, but sometimes they, it's like yeah, the opposite. They it's beasted people on Cash recently. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's the thing, like when they had a huge down period. It was, this, it was the only like map that that was giving them any amount of dignity because they they were able to still compete on cash of, of of out of all the other maps which they were failing on they could rely on it but I don't know it's how, this is the thing it's, this is why like when I'm not casting because I don't like James said I don't bet on matches that I that I cast I I rarely bet on matches of Hellraisers unless it's like a value bet because I never I you never know. You just never know these guys. Actually, how you never how know. Yeah, Hellraisers is one of the, one of the uh, teams I, I bet on the most. Are oh, you betting on them the most? Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't. I think. Uh, well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. There was a land where they, in group stages, got like what was it, sixteen zeroed by Epsilon, and and th then then I was very much never gonna <laughs> be interested again. <laughs> but <laughs> interestingly, we're seeing uh, Shoxi able to hold down here with this P two fifty. Two players taken down on the A take. And that bomb is dropped in front of main. This is a great situation. LDLC might be able to pull this back. We do have uh, a couple of CZs in play. Of course, the CZs, some of the, the nerfs got reverted. So it's, it's much more usable again. I have to see Markov can get this bomb. And oh, he turns just at the wrong moment. And LDLC have a two versus one situation. In goes Simple with the AK. Does dispatch Happy. And there's the last one. But significant damage was done. LDLC might have just pushed themselves to position, James, where like... They have to keep buying. If they keep Hellraisers on low money, then we know that they love to just keep the pressure up. Yeah, absolutely. Shoxi picking up the AWP now, which is interesting because he, I remember him specifically saying that he, he didn't want to uh, do much AWPing or he wanted to do a lot less AWPing, maybe no AWPing at all. He wanted to be all over those rifles, but he has picked up the AWP now. It is three to two. So, uh, oh my days. I think maybe they feel like they're in a dire situation here as they're not doing very well on the CT side but uh, Shoxi gets eliminated immediately so I think that might be it for uh, orping in his regard I mean Shoxi versus simple if it's orps you've got to go simple absolutely and uh, ooh, just throwing this make at the right timing it's very smart play deny, deny these early uh, picks from Hellraisers that they're looking for but we are seeing that uh, already RDLC have lost Shoxi and Kiyoshima so Three players left. It's hard to work out how to position here. They obviously need to try to find a way to uh, cover both sides. And quickly, you can do that from upper. But will Angel find Smith behind the smoke here? In goes Smith. And Angel, oh, gashes him in the back. And it's just happy. Left. <laughs> I was about to say an MVK, but it's just happy. This, this is the problem. Like They're just finding all these picks. Our DLC needs to get better on this execution, or they need to stop giving up these angles here, because that was a clean sweep almost. This is what I'm talking about. This is, this yeah. is, why, this is why you, this is why Dude, you cannot count out Hellraisers yeah, on cash, because simple. Yeah, it's, it's really rough. It's really rough, man. These guys, they just hit these shots and like, what can you do? RDLC in with another pistol buy, see if they can get something happening here. It's pretty unlikely. We saw Hellraisers approach a similar round uh, like this last time with just a push on upper, a very fast push on upper. Are we going to see a more slower style here? They are push pushing two outside, holding lobby, looking for the peaks. And uh, they know the pistols are there for LDLC. So they are going to be cautioned to try to avoid some of those closer ranges. And they're simple. Oh, wow, he actually got the wall bang, and he will die because of it through the rail. 
And that's actually horrible. If they pick up that AWP, oh, and MBK steals away the AWP off the floor. That could be uh, quite interesting. We'll have to see how that develops here as uh, Kyoshima now is the man with the AWP in his hands. Hellraisers, they have to make a call here. They've got three players left now that MBK dispatched Angel. They're trying to get into this upper bomb site. Markloff in a good position. Does <laughs> Flamey and Markloff shooting each other. Flamey jumping to his death. This is, this is looking very awkward all of a sudden. And uh, MVK picking up another kill here with the AK. There's guns all over the place here to be picked up for LDLC. Dozier does return one onto MVK. And that bomb is in his arms. He needs to try to get himself to a site. It's not going to happen. In goes Kyoshin with the AWP. James, we're seeing like train wreck after train wreck. It's a war of attrition right now. And uh, yes, the C so the CZ, some changes have been reverted. Obviously, the, the bullet data has not because it did have si previously have the same data as P250, which is w one of the reasons it was extremely OP, because it was like an, a P250 with automatic fire, which is absurd. <laughs> but um, the fire rate has been returned to what it once was. And uh, some uh, some quite remember. But um, definitely the fire rate's back. So it is, again, a viable weapon. Although you do have to be um, closer than before for those those one-shots to the head. And I think, I think the recoil is, is still worse than it was before. Well, I mean, in this round we're seeing the uh, smokes go outside to block off Shoxi. And uh, they do also have the Outer Cat smoke, and that will block Happy's vision. In they go, down secret. Nobody dying. In goes Smith from the back on the flank. Are they going to catch him in? Oh, look at that. Markov just, just messing up the timing there. And the bomb is dropped as well. That's one of those things we were talking about last week as well, which we saw in multiple situations where the, the trailing man is the man of the bomb. Sometimes he gets caught short and it puts the uh, terrorists in a very compromising position. You can see there's a strong hold on the uh, ramp area at the moment. NBK, they're just going to have to retreat. He's got two people to help him while Hellraisers are kind of hanging around a kind of door uh, B long area. Let's see if they go for a push. Again, when you're trying to take B, holding that area with the windows is very, very important. But uh, the frag's coming in thick and fast if LDLC gets a man to drop. That's going to be the first one down. Uh, Flamey taking out Happy, but it's four on one right now. He has next to no chance of getting a bomb plant here. All right, so much better defense here from LDLC, and they need to keep this going. Four rounds for Hellraisers. They can almost just be happy with that. Like, if they if they keep racking these rounds up, this is going to get really interesting. So maybe maybe that's what we should be rooting for. But we will see the pistols coming into play for Hellraisers. We've got CZ on Angel and uh, Deagle, just, uh, just a, a mix here from them. And uh, this is good now for LDLC. It gives them an opportunity to start like building that bank. We do have two players on 6K, one on 4K, as you can see there. So it's starting to like look a little bit more, more normal for them. So we'll have to see if they can hold on to this. We're, we're seeing some pre nades going on here. Very standard stuff in from LDLC. Is Hellraisers, wow, great, great uh, wall bang knowledge there from Smith. As you heard, the uh, stepping on the silo. Knew exactly where to place that crosshair. And he will be rewarded. Got Shoxy picking one off outside as well. So Elraz is not really able to get into the push. Already getting thinned out as they try to make their way across some of these positions. But it's pretty much to be expected here. And LDLC with the cleanup. That's uh, five to four. Losing no one. That's a lot of extra money in the bank. And finally, they can be somewhat comfortable. But I don't know how long that's going to last because Elraz is picking up those AKs. Things are going to get pretty crazy in, in here, I guess because what we've been seeing so far is just madness. I want this trend to continue, James, for all five maps, because I want there to be five maps, and I want it to be madness. Yes, we do love a good war of attrition. A good back and forth always makes for exciting matches here, and a very curious economy management. So we have three guys outside. No AWP on Simple. That's going to be very important. They're definitely going to want to find Shoxy. Interesting that Shoxy is the one rolling with the AWP rather than Smiths, when Smiths is the kind of uh, the seasoned veteran with the AWP. Uh, so let's have a look at where Shoxy is at the moment. He is playing Catwalk. Someone's been tagged. That is, uh, oh, Flamey 7 HP, Angel 34. Very easy, easily in uh, the HPs in the range of uh, spray downs here. So they're going to have to be very, very careful, but the T's are just loitering outside at the moment. Angel going to be the first one to fall. And a trade frag coming in from Flamey, so that's the AWP down. Simple has spotted one of the CTs. That's going to be uh, Smiths by the vents. So there's a one-man advantage here. Still a reasonable amount of time on the clock now for Hellraisers. But they've got three players on reasonably low health. Happy to do lots of damage here. That's going to be one. That's a second one now. Two versus one. Flamey 7 HP. 
Bomb is still in a very compromising place. I think they're going to have to go for the frag here. And it looks like the flank is coming in from Markolov. Oh, this, is, this could be perfect. Look, this is exactly how, how heroes have been making so many frags. They find these timings for one player to distract and then the other can peek. This has happened again and again. And Happy got had to get a four kill there to make that to save that round. Heroes is going to pick up number five. That's amazing. I would be feeling so good right now in their shoes. I would be feeling on top of the world. Do you think like LDLC are feeling any, uh, not necessarily pressure, but you, f you feel like they're just not feeling tip top at the moment on the execution? What do you think is, uh, is, is majorly going wrong for them at the moment? They're just losing the jewels. It does, they're, seem, it does seem to be sim as simple as that. Yeah, they're losing, they're losing the jewels basically. Although uh, there's one in the bag for Shoxi. Almost got a warbang as well, but uh, I think he knows where Angel is. And he's setting himself up for the second frag and there it is. We have uh, someone going for a boost. And I think it's Smith's up there just going for the wallbang again. Flamey down to 76 HP. So two early frags here for the CTs, which is, gonna, which is going to put them in a very strong position to win this round. But we saw what happened last time when we had loads of, loads of massive frags come out in a very short space of time for Hellraiser. Smith's going to abuse his position there to take out Markolov. So uh, Hellraiser's not looking good for this one. But 5-5, five five, they have uh, nothing to complain about, definitely. And... Obviously, yep. uh, they, they do have a lot of interesting options with Simple, because I was just thinking that we saw we saw them uh, lose a man uh, there. Well, actually, let's, let's, hold, let's hold that for a second here. We got a Simple already with uh, a couple of frags coming in here, making his way to lo the lower site. If there's a man f on Hellraisers to pull this one off, it could very well be Simple, but it looks like he's going to get cut off from the back. That is a fantastic angle by Smiths. Yes. That's a really nice angle. But uh, one point that I wanted to bring up was that something we saw from that is when they knew they were up against a strong opera on Yard, they would always smoke it off and never peek and always have someone covering um, the guys who were holding the nades um, just in case there was a push from T-Red. And they had this setup all the time and never ever peeked or challenged the opera outside. You have Simple, so that actually does change the equation for Hellraiser is that they can do the challenge. But that last round, we saw them give up two easy kills to Shoxi. Oh, and a very uh, predictable move there uh, on behalf of Simple. Shoxi is going to basically just destroy all of them apart from Flamey pulling out the Deagle headshot. That's great from Flamey. However, it is... A little bit too lackluster, as we are going to see LDLC still in a, a big advantage here. So, oh, hello. Those, yeah, making it happen there, but there goes the spray. Seven to five, LDLC pulling some rounds back, but this shouldn't be so back and forth, James. That's not, that's not the story of Nuke. The problem for Hellraisers now is they don't have the money to furnish Simples with an AWP. And he hasn't bought here, so he had 4,800 in the bank. I think there was a discussion as to whether he goes uh, glass cannon and just buys the AWP with no armor. But uh, I don't think that would be a very good idea, especially on a map like Nuke, where the nades can come in thick and fast in various positions. And uh, yeah, so they've opted for an AK instead. You can see they're setting themselves up for potentially a set play. But uh, let's have a look at the positioning. We've got uh, only one person in the lobby at the moment, so I don't think there's going to be any fast sight push anytime soon. Anytime soon, Kishima again, just uh, looking to abuse those angles as much as possible. Going to go for some wall bangs as well, but not going to find anyone just yet. Looks like Hellraisers are starting to gather towards the A site. They've got two people pushing on it. Uh, Markov's gone down. Kishima with a strong hold from the back of the site. Flamey get, gets taken out as well. So four versus three in favor of LDLC. Those are getting the first frag, and I think the bomb has been planted on the B site. So distraction on the A site while they get the bomb plant, which means they're at the very least going to have lots of money for their next rounds. So Harris is clearly uh, running some very awesome strats here, wasting a lot of time here. They do have one man. It is simple against uh, three players who are going for the defuse. In he comes from the flank there through the vents, able to pick off the first defuser. There's just a horrible situation now for LDLC. They have to kill Simple. He gets another frag and MBK is going to get the kill, but there's no time. Simple did the perfect amount of work to pull out the round. And that is one more. That's six now for Hellraisers. LDLC have to be getting worried about this. This can't feel good at all. We are going to see Shox picking up the AWP again, but that was a wonderfully executed round by Hellraisers. And you have to give credit to Simple for the very good individual play there at the end yeah. because he got the first frag, two people left. Now, in that situation, you may want to hide, go for a, a reload and then peek again. But by that, by that time, 
the second CT covering the defuse is going to be in far too strong a position. So he goes for a, an earlier peek on the second guy straight away to try and get an early frag. Didn't go his way straight away, but the idea was definitely good. And uh, did go in his favor in the end. He wasted enough time, ran enough distraction to uh, stop LDLC from getting that bomb defuse. And it is going to be a one-round deficit, but it uh, doesn't tell the whole story, that's for sure. They have taken over ramp at the moment. We saw that... Uh yeah, MBK got pushed down to the lower side. He didn't get picked off. But that's an interesting situation now. Hellraiser's removed ramp control, so that's a threat. So they have to put players uh, down on the lower side. Hellraiser's don't have any presence outside, though. So it's, it's interesting from the position of how do, they, how do they work these options. Do they try to push Hell and, and have like pressure towards Heaven? That's, that's quite difficult. But they can split onto upper site. We are seeing a Simple coming onto the hot position here. So they are going to actually go for this split on upper, it would seem. There it is. They're getting up onto Heaven. There's the player. It's Kyoshima gets taken down from the uh, rafters. And we will have Flamey getting the bomb plant towards Heaven. This is so well done by Hellraisers. Once again, they're in a four-on-one situation, looking to pick up the seventh round. And this... Was it looked just really standard this round? They took over ramp, then they split on upper. It was that that was it. Yeah, but there's four of them left alive, James. Second last round as well. So NBK pretty much has to save versus four miscreants from the terrorist side. I, <laughs> I didn't expect this at all. I didn't expect this kind of a result from Hellraisers. I feel really bad now because <laughs> I was kind of talking it down a little bit. I, was, I mean, I was saying them that they were the worst team out of LDLC and Hellraisers, which is, I think, fair Terrorists on paper. Win. But uh, we'll have to see if LDLC can bring this back. We certainly have a very interesting match on our hands now. As they are tied up, LDLC 7, Hellraisers 7. We move into the last round, and it is a scrappy buy, to say the least, here from LDLC. Okay, so simple. Getting the AWP for the last round. See where he goes with it gonna leave the bomb out there so you can see as a team of, of, quite often people would just leave the bomb in the lobby but you can see well they left it early but it has been picked up so never mind curious to see where the T's will generally leave, leave the bomb early on in rounds but we'll have a look at what LDLC do so they've given up outside completely which is cool they don't have really the weapons to hold it so it's a sensible decision here Kyoshima with an impromptu push into into lobby it's actually gonna be rewarded with a kill and he's going to be able to pick up that AK-47 as well. Good start here for LDLC. Lots of info for them also. But here comes Simple from main. Got the orb. Misses the flick shot. And uh, in goes Happy from the window. Catching two players in the back. Simple going to be able to trade onto him. But this is still a two-player deficit that Hellraisers are running with. 50 seconds left on the clock. And uh, Simple's going to go down. Surprised by Kyoshima. Gozia. Got some work to do now. And... Uh, Oh, the LC do have a good grip of the positions, and Smith's going to take Dozier down. And we do have an 8 7 first half, but wow. That was a great last half, uh, last round for yeah. LDLC. Also, worth noting, you can see the, the nerf in action there on the CZ in terms of the warm up time. As uh, Simple saw he was off against two, tried to pull out the CZ, but uh, couldn't even load the chamber before getting taken out. By the French. So frustrating. It's so frustrating. That's kind of why I wouldn't use use it because it's just really frustrating to just like slowly draw it out. Uh, yeah, I suppose. I suppose uh, it's really. It good might be a still, situational pistol, like you, depending on how you're playing a map and what side you're on, you may uh, opt for it or maybe a P250. But we are on the second pistol round now. We can see if Hellraisers can uh, try and take down shocks early or avoid them altogether. In fact, let's roll with shocks and see what he is up to just stopped by a smoke at the moment looks like they are going to go towards ramp however the re-smoke comes in flamey with an aggressive position waiting for any of these to go for a cheeky push so you can take him out trying to see if he can spot any legs there any gaps in the smoke nothing just yet kishima and shoxy waiting to pounce let the games begin Absolutely. Very defensive opening from LDLC. Want to make sure that they can get a good bearing on the situation. Try, maybe try to like figure out some positions. But now it comes the ramp take. So they have ramp. MBK is locking down lobby. In goes Markov. They're able to get the trade as MBK try to push up. It. Here they go once again. They've got a player in from main. It's happy as well. They wanted to split from three places onto this site. It's working out pretty well so far. They are on position. But there are still a couple players left alive here for Hellraisers. We do have Flamey and Angel, and that bomb is going to go down. Can it be safe though? It's 
Flamey. He's going to get taken out. I mean, here goes Angel around the corner for the follow-up. Does take down Happy in the end. Still two players. Angel's trying to work his way around these corners. Now the time is slowly ticking away. He does have a kit, though. But this is awkward. Shoxy doing the dance here up at heaven. It'd be really annoying. Goes in for the kill. He's going to get it. Well played to Shoxy. And now the LC going to pick up the pistol. Not the start Hellraisers wanted, obviously. They want to build that economy as soon as possible and get simple going with his heat up. But uh, not going to happen just yet as they narrowly lose that pistol. Good comeback there after uh, some important frags for LDLC, but it wasn't enough. LDLC extend their lead and they're going to have to win as many rounds as possible as early on because obviously they are on the much less favoured side. Curious to see where Flamey's going to play, actually, once the buy rounds come in, replacing Kucha. I imagine he's just going to kind of fill the gap and they won't change anything drastic. Smith's down to 16 HP already. He's been blown up by somebody. You see lots of CZs back in the mix now on the Hellraiser side. Absolutely. Here is uh, Dozy looking for those one leagues and lots of damage being done. Even a frag now being found. Hellraiser is uh, not doing so badly just yet. That is the most disgusting case hard of AK I have ever seen. Oh, DLC needs to be careful here. But they don't blow this advantage. Look at that quick peek with that CZ. Going to reward Simple with a frag. He might even be able to pick up the weapon. That was really smart by Hellraisers as well because they he 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 acted on that n smoke as if yep. it was a flashbang. So he, I think they were hoping that the T would turn away if there was one there bef in case it was a flash before he could identify what nade it actually was. So very, very small thing there which gave Hellraisers an important advantage. Oh, and here we go. LDLC struggling to get in. MBK going down to 9 health. Gets taken out by Angel. They're getting swarmed all over the place. Surrounded. Hellraisers pick up yet another round here. And this is very awkward. This is kind of... I don't know, man. Like, LDLC should have won that round. They should have uh, got a few rounds going. They're already in a terrible position. Hellraisers broke them from an eco on the CT side here. This is, this is the, huge. The important thing as well is that those are saved a rifle from the previous round, which means he's going into this round still with $3,000 in the bank, which means if they win this round and lose one player, Simple has an all. Yeah, that's a really big deal. That, that is not to be understated. So how is this with a nice hold here? Some pre-nades going in as LDLC harass a little bit, trying to look for, for those early round picks. Nothing to be found for them just yet, though. They're going to have to take some risks to try to make these frags happen. Harris is already dropping uh, a player down. It's flamey, I think. But Simple's there as well. This could be quite tough to get in here. But Smith is looking for the pick nonetheless. And there it is. Simple. Perfect position there. Baited out by Flamey. S oh, wow. Simple going to go down immediately. MBK starts the train down to the lower bomb site, Chasing him down. Flamey going to get taken out by the CZ. And uh, there it is. Weapon picked up for MBK. Does have uh, a lot of grenades. Oh, in fact, sorry, he only has one grenade to work with. Pretty much the opposite of a lot. <laughs> we have Angel coming out of secret. Might just get the backstab. He does. Happy goes down. And now Hellraiser's has taken advantage. They don't know where the bomb is, though. That is a big issue here. But LDLC are running out of times to plant the bomb. NBK still loitering in B. You can see him sliding up the ladder at the moment, just having a peek, trying to find someone, but it's all down to Shoxi. He is the man with the bomb. 19 seconds remaining. L NBK trying to bait, but Markolov has seen it and takes them both out. So, uh, again, three people surviving for LDLC. Does the AWP come out here? Hel Dozier's got 6,300, and yes, immediately put Simple on that AWP. So this is uh, definitely an interesting spot now as uh, our will start building that bank. They got, they should have a pretty easy round here. There's no real, really like menacing pistols apart from the P250s uh, for LDLC. So our is going to find the great engagements, going to take the long ranges and uh, just hit the execution. Let's see a quick push here from LDLC. Can they uh, surprise them? Well, there is a quick frag onto Angel. Sends him flying down the ladder. The bomb goes down. That's a brilliant result there for LDLC. They're already happy with this. Uh, MBK going to pick up another frag. It's actually a three on three. The weapon going to MBK as well. Picks up the FAMAS. So this is... Oh, what a simple! Pulls out the knife. What a set! <laughs> he does eventually get it. And there is a player in Toxic. Happy's going to come in from the vents. As that bomb does tick away. Here goes the defuse though. Shoxy knows where he is. Gets the kill onto Simple. And now it's all on Dozier. There's not much time. He has to back away. This is ridiculous. They have now done to Harris is what Harris did to them and Simple. He uh, 
He put it all on that knife. Those that should be running to try and find the AWP now. But he's going to stand behind the box. Probably didn't have enough time to get there, and he wouldn't have known <laughs> match, that shocks he was carrying it. But that, that all went just uh, belly up. And I was, I was going to say, actually, they put Simple on the AWP straight away, but they put him on the AWP in an eco run, which is probably not the most ideal time no, to have no. an AWP, um, which is a difficult posi position because if you clean up the eco, then they still doesn't have an AWP in the next round. So I don't know what the kind of most optimal situation is there. I think it's fine, but it's just, obviously that's kind of what, you, that shouldn't happen. Yeah. They had three P250s, that was it. They made amazing entries with those P250s. So LDLC have blown off Squeaky. You can see Shoxi just holding an angle through Squeaky. Kishima trying to bait people through the heart. Is going to find a frag in Simple Dozier standing next to where Simple was as well, just in case the push comes in. And they're trying to play on picks. But uh, LDLC being patient for the time being, not going to go crazy, make any mistakes. Going to take things slowly. Ideally, they're probably going to want to uh, reduce Hellraisers to three before a strong push comes in. I'm going to rotate and make use of that AWP range. There is someone in secret for Hellraiser. That's going to be Angel. He is starting to back off, actually, although I think he may be making a return. Oh, those angles from Happy, the king of the warbangs. He is. He truly is. And that man, hand that man a crown. Angel with two quick frags, though, is going to make it a little bit more annoying for LDLC, but they still have three players barreling down. Or actually, they were barreling down into the secret, but now they've actually returned to yard. They're going towards main, looking for that upper push, perhaps. Dozier by the CT vent. Going to get uh, jumped in on by MBK, but he manages to make the frag. There is the second one, surely, but no, the Deagle's not good enough. And Flamey now coming in from the vents. He still hasn't found the weapon. He's just been rolling with that CZ all round. Position being known, there is a, there's a gun on the roof of Hut. Has he seen it? He could jump and grab it with E. It's literally above his head. There we go. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and it is even fully loaded, but Shoxy's going to end Flamey. And that's going to be two players surviving for LDLC to put them on 11 to the 9 of Hellraisers, who certainly are in a bit of a spot of bother because as much as it looked terrible for LDLC, well, so far they seem to be doing almost exactly the same thing as Hellraisers did to them. At this point, I have no idea what's going to happen. In no, the it's just very unpredictable. But I'm, I, I really would like to, at some point, we should have a conversation about if you buy the AWP on Nuke when you're expecting your opponent to be I, on an eco. I honestly think it's okay. It just, you just have to bear in mind what positions that you're playing. Um, yeah. you, sometimes, I, I, I sometimes. You can make, you can make you it pretty safe. Mm. The problem is, is, that, is, if that you, is if you get isolated or if you have to retake. Oh, why? Like what happened there? Did. Oh, they've put, they've put extra people on ramp and left main completely exposed. Got punished really early by LDLC. The flank coming in, taking down the player on hut. Only Angel remains. One player down. That's happy. Kishima on three HP, so he's going to try and get out of the way of this madness. I think uh, NVK was just slightly spotted there. Angel has no idea where that AWP came from. I don't know if Shoxi could even see him or if he's just trying to bait. But uh, Angel's putting a, a lot of damage here. He, he almost got the frag there as well. This is a very costly round here for LDLC. Let's have a look at the money now. Indeed, at this point, I don't think they can really afford to take that much abuse after planting the bomb versus one player. We do have the AWP coming out here for Simple. Are we going to see Famas's for the terrorist side? No, they've got enough to afford it. <laughs> the they've still got a full buy coming out, actually. But, but the thing is, if they lose this round, LDLC should, in theory, although, of course, this game is not really going to, towards, like, theories, not supporting that at all, but they should theoretically be able to d easily get to 14. And that that's, like, kind of very close to game over territory. So this is a crucially important one for Hellraisers. They need to get this round. They need to get the ball rolling on their economy. And they got Simple out here on Yard. He's playing a defensive position by Hell here. There is another player that is uh, sat over by Garage, which is Angel. So there's a good presence outside. However, LDLC aren't really all that concerned. They are looking for this pick into Ramp. This could be pretty huge. If Smith gets this pick, opens up this area. Oh, there it is. Does manage to find one frag. Choxy going in for the next one. Does get the tag onto Flamey. That's going to send him hurtling down to the lower site. And this is good news for LDLC. Now they have uh, just a swath of options to pick from of how to attack. And they still have a lot of time. Shoxy's going to keep the push going on the lower side, though. Let me find that frag. He does have an AK now. And Hellraiser's going to have to make some crazy frags happen here to save this. 
Angel does get the drop on Happy to try to equalize things. The bomb is going to go down during that little altercation. And this is uh, going to be hard for Hellraisers to come back from. Kiyoshima, nice pick onto Dozier by Ramp. And Angel and Markov now, they need to save these weapons. They have no money at all. This is very bad. And they don't even have a kit either. Ooh, this is an interesting match, James. Yeah, that eco well and truly broke them yeah. by LDLC. And uh, again, they're going to get some post-plant damage in here. Going to be able to pick up an AK as well, which uh, could make all the difference in the next round. Yeah. So Absolutely. You can drop a Famous now. Yeah, but they're running out of rounds. I mean, this is, this is crunch time right here. Uh, but look what all they have to play with. Not that much. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, just... Good, good, I just, good luck to our Razors. If the, the thing is, right, if they can pull it... From what we've seen so far, I wouldn't be surprised. I, don't, I hesitate to make any predictions based on what I think is most likely. Of course, nothing's a sure thing, but, but it is very, very unlikely here that our Razors are going to be able to hold on easily against some of the, the offense we're seeing from LDLC so far. Uh, Flame is in a good position there with the Famas. He does have... Uh, I think he's alone, actually, on ramp. And so far we've seen LDLC, they, they are very good at just pushing into ramp and finding the picks. Smith once again leading the way. He doesn't have the AWP though. Shocks is the one with the AWP. Smith's going to find the entry onto Flamey. That's ramp open yet again now for LDLC. They try to challenge him. Simple does pick up the kill. And uh, that's going to be a nice consolation. Ooh, almost gets taken down though. And Angel very low as well. Interestingly, Flamey was actually using the burst fire mode on the FAMAS just for that quick spray through, which I uh, don't normally see people see. All right, timing, Kishima just looks away as he may have found a CT in the vent. And yeah, Angel got sprayed down to 8 HP. I don't even think he was seen by the enemy, but uh, just good pre-firing there by the T's. And again, they have control of B. NBK going to put himself in a strong position in vent as let's have a look at where the bomb is. That's going to be Shoxy carrying the orb and the bomb. Creeping towards... A at the moment, as we do have uh, Kishima just pushing through heaven as the flash comes in, but uh, it's not really going to work out for them as two of them get taken out. Oh, has managed to survive. Can they find the open time? I don't think they will. Oh, well, they are going to have themselves a buy now after winning that round, but it's it is uh, it's a bit stretched to say the least. They don't have a lot of cash for the amount of nades they'd really want necessarily. Oh well, they're actually doing all right on nades actually because they uh, it, but they only have simple really that without nades. So I misread the money there. So looking pretty good on that that regard. But LDLC 13, how raises 10. This is this this doesn't really represent what new <laughs> normally looks like at all. This is awesome. Got Angel there by CT Vent. Ready to drop down. This is a really cool position. You can see how safe he is. He can just take the shot and then drop and be completely safe. It's a really nice thing to copy. Smith's going to just go for it. No armor even, but gets the kill. The CZ returning to prominence. With That's something that was always so good at. And uh, Smith's abusing it once again. Able to pick up that M4 now. It's going to put a hole in the defense of Hellraisers. They have to try to compensate. But there's, there's uh, Smith lurking around still with that M4. Simple though. Good position to deal with it. And in goes the push into upper site now, through main. Some great work here from these, these Tech 9s. Shocks looking for that third kill. Rattling off that Tech 9. Oh my goodness, it's disgusting what that weapon can do in the hands of the man. Shoxy, bomb to be put down. In comes Angel, one on one. Shoxy makes it happen. There's the fourth frag. Rick tech nine. 9 all the way. And that's round 14 for LDLC in map number one here. Can they close it? Hellraisers are broke. How long until Valve make the Tech 9 slightly more balanced? I don't know, man. Because it is too strong. It's really right? good. The general consensus is it's a little bit too strong. Come on, yeah. Valve. Plocks. But yes, her razors have been broken once again. I was, I was kind of happy that the CZ re was removed. It looks like they're going to play for overtime. Yep, that's, that's smart. Yeah, absolutely. I've got no qualms against it. it. It's not something you see that often. A lot, of t a lot of the time, people uh, will force on the 14. But they are going for the eco. But I mean, they would be so, their buy would be so poor. And they're not that far away, considering the uh, balance of the map and other things. But again, I think they've really been hurt by the uh, lack of warp on the side. Because that's why Simple's there, right? But he, they haven't been able to afford it for a very long time. Smartly, there's a quick peek from the CT, but he gets out of there before he gets himself into trouble. Markolov, though. Is going to fall, having uh, no helmet or anything. 
And the push is going to come into ramp as maybe they expect a rotation through to the A site. But Shoxi just annihilating everybody right now. Happy is just doing the flank as uh, two Hellraisers remain. Make that one last man standing being Dozier. So Kiyoshima is down, but uh, not much happening here for Hellraisers. Let's see what else he can do. We've been seeing quite a big game here from Shox. 28 frags. And I uh, have definitely been seeing, seeing great performances from him recently. Um, sometimes he's a little bit too, too much on the wayside, considering his, uh, his reputation. But, uh, well, Dozier is going to be able to pick himself up. An AK-47 doesn't have a kit, though. So, probably looking to hold on to this if he can get some more damage done. He's got to run somewhere, though, because the bomb is above his head, more or less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no escape. Actually, looks like he's going to try it. He is behind the concrete wall, though, so I'm curious to see if he'll survive here. Nope. No, not going to make it. But he did get another extra frag out of it, so it's okay. 15 to 10 Hellraisers playing for the overtime. Now is the moment of truth for them. Can they sustain the attack of LDLC? Can they defend correctly? Well, we'll have to see. Shock's still running with the Tech-9, I'd be afraid. It's actually so good. Yeah, it's... T's just running at you with Tech-9 is probably the scariest and thing the And the CZ again now. now. It's worse than 5P90s. Oh! Okay, oh, well we didn't even see the shot there, but that looked painful. Well, that happened. That was the thing. So already, uh, Dozier getting removed. This is very bad news indeed for Hellraisers. Going down to four players. LDLC taking a slow uh, approach here. I am wondering if we're going to see Smith making that, that key entry on ramp, which he's done with such consistency. It's just a FAMAS here for Flamey, so it's much harder to fight with against those AKs. Already his teammates are going down over by the upper bomb site. Things are looking terrible. LDLC taking more and more grip of the map, taking it away. Mark Loft, though, able to take down Shox as he pushes out of Hut, so still holding on to the upper bomb site. In goes the push onto ramp now from LDLC. Flamey has a much better position to play defensively, get some info. There it is, goes for the fight. Well, this might not be so uh, so strong, so go for the repeaks here. But that FAMAS, in comes NBK, ends Flamey's life. And Markov now one on four to save the map. Not going to happen. Smith with the tap tap. And we do have ourselves map number one going to uh, Hell, uh, going to LDLC, not Hellraisers. Um, but it was... It was really weird. I mean, neither team could win rounds on CT. When do you see that on Nuke? Yeah, I mean, you see that sometimes on Inferno, but Nuke is, is not always the way. It's and, you know, we, we, th we thought Hellraisers were in with, with, a, with a really good chance there. But mm. um, again, they just uh, their economy was just in tatters yeah. for the large majority. That eco they lost was just a disaster for them. Stop Simple being able to do what he did because he didn't have the money to buy the AWP. And then that was a wrap, pretty much. It just didn't go... Yeah. Just kind of went like that from there. Both teams seem to be finding entries on the T side with much more ease than you'd normally see. Uh, that's, that's a match where I'd love to like go back and look at the demo because there's a lot, a lot of stuff that was going on that's hard to see or say it's any one thing. But at least it seemed like entries were coming really easily for both teams. But either way, we are going to move on to Dust2 as the next map, which is uh, the pick of LDLC. They are a fantastic Dust2 team. Can Hellraisers... Uh, can Hellraisers have another, I guess, a bit of a surprise performance with such a good play on the T side there? Mm. I, I totally think that Hellraisers can take it, us too, from, uh, from, from LDLC. Yeah, it's, ent it's entirely doable. But um, again, I think we'll see Smiths on York now rather than the Shoxie. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if, if Shoxie was playing an AWP on Nuke, A, because it was Nuke, or B, because, I mean, I mean it's interesting that he's playing it and, and not Smiths. Yeah, but then that's, again, that's what I find curious. But then again, it, it was quite interesting from the perspective that Smith obviously had this entry fragging role, which normally I would have thought that I'd like Shoxy on that. But Smith was entering into ramp consistently, and he was doing it very well. On the CT side, though, he was playing rafters, just mm. doing the war bangs onto Silo and so on. I'm wondering if it's because if it was a matchup of styles, like Smith's orping style versus Shoxy's orping style, maybe. He, Smith doesn't prefer to AWP on new compared to Shoxy, who knows? But um, yeah. curious questions. Indeed. Before we go to break, it's giveaway time, obviously. We have uh -oh. too many skins, guys. Too many skins. All right. Uh -oh. All right. So, it's time. <laughs> we're going to do, what we're going to do is, we're going to do two draws, okay? We're going to do one raffle, we're going to roll twice. First person wins heads, he wins Eagle Mako's knife. Which is a bison. Tails, he wins an AK case hardened. 
and the second person wins an AK case hardened anyway. The uh, giveaway sign will be exclamation mark CSGO lounge. I think it's time to flip. All right, man. Has the hey, tails, one, of my one of my friends said to me that um, I have like the best coin flip EU because it doesn't even, it just, it just falls on the tape. So I'm going to try a big one this time. 